Good evening, everyone. Can you all hear me? Oh, yes, I see some waves. So good evening. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for another day of life. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy that's new on this day. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to gather on this Zoom call to learn, study, and grow how to be better disciples and better Christians and better representatives of you, Lord. So we thank you for the opportunity. I pray, Lord, that our hearts and our minds will be ready to receive the information that you have for us on this evening. And I pray, God, that the information will not just be uh, data for us to collect, but that it will transform us. So we thank you, God. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to start with a few announcements. We want to lift in our, uh, keep in our prayers, uh, Sister Rosetta Crawley, Brother Harvey Price, Sister Annabelle Newsom, and any others that you know of that are sick and shut in. And we also want to continue to keep in our prayers all those who are dealing with bereavement at this time. The Catholic Charities um, Community Mass Food Distribution will take place uh, next Monday, November 14th at the church, 105 2nd Street. Um, the giveaway uh, starts at 930, um, and we are looking for volunteers. If you are um, able and available to volunteer, then you should please arrive at the church by 830, um, 105 2nd Street um, at the church for the mass food distribution next Monday on November the 14th. Or, excuse me, arrive at 815 next Monday. Uh, Metropolitan will also be having our annual Thanksgiving Day basket giveaway, and that will be the following Monday, November 21st. 21st. Um, if anybody is interested in signing up for a basket, signups begin Sunday, November 13th. Um, and you can do so on, um, at the website to sign up for a basket, or if anybody you know needs a basket, they can sign up on the website. And of course, volunteers are needed for that event as well. So you can text OUTREACH to 518-313-5140. And again, that is to help um, with the Thanksgiving basket giveaway November 21st at the church. Um, tomorrow, the Season Saints will be having a worship service at 10 a.m. in the chapel. And the guest preacher will be Reverend Constance Knight of the uh, Welcome Chapel Baptist Church. So again, all our Season Saints are invited to attend the uh, service that will take place tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the chapel, again, for our season saints. So at this time, we'll pause and give everyone a chance to give. Uh, again, there's five ways to give, which I'm sure everyone is familiar with. So we will pause and give everyone a chance to give at this time. Father, we thank you for the gift. We thank you for the giver. We thank you for those who had it to give, and we thank you for those who wanted to give, but who, who didn't have it at this time. Let all of the gifts be used to glorify your name and edify your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. One other quick announcement before we get to um, tonight's lesson. Um, as we come to a close for this session of Metro U, I will need everyone's email address for those that have completed the requirements to receive a completion certificate. I will need your uh, email address. So I will put my email in the chat. And if you can uh, send me your name with your email address, that would be great if I don't have it. Um, if you received the certificate last semester, then I'll probably have your email address. But to be on the safe side, you can just email me your um, name and your email address. So with that, we will uh, prepare ourselves for this evening's uh, lesson. Well, praise the Lord. We are continuing our look at the bait of Satan by John Bevere. In the past few weeks, we've been really looking at forgiveness from chapter 11 and removing uh, through that uh, for another week on forgiveness as well. So let's um, have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for today and we acknowledge that, our, that we need you. 
to be the great teacher that will lead, guide, and direct us into all truth, your Holy Spirit. So we ask to anoint us for this period, this teaching moment. We pray, O oh God, that your truth will resonate with us and that we will apply it to our lives. Thy word have we hid in our hearts that we may not sin against thee. Bless this time of study. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We have one more week for Metro U Fall 2022 and your certificates of completion and your um, will be sent to you by email. So they will be emailed to you, Sister Moet Slaughter, our Director of Christian Education has been taking, tallying up all of the, those who have done the requirements, both for the lessons and the small groups, as well as there will be a special acknowledgement for those who have had perfect attendance for all 10 of the weeks, all right? So we've got one more week next week, and then we will break until January the 11th. And in January the 11th, we'll be studying the book of James for Metro U Spring 2023, all right? It will begin Wednesday, January the 11th, 17 weeks of study through the book of James, all right? And so uh, that's, that's how we're going to flow for the next, uh, next semester, all right? When life happens is we're going to look at the book of James when life happens. That's what we're going to look at, all right? Let's look at Luke chapter 17. Verses 1 through 6, it's been our focus scripture for this series, Bait of Satan. We've kind of gone through it since the beginning of the year. It's been a, a tremendous blessing for all who have been studying it from January up to now, and certainly are thankful for it and thankful for you. Luke 17, 1 through 6, then said he unto the disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day and seven times in a day, turn again and to thee saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted by the sea, and it should obey you. We want to talk tonight about the faith to face the hurt. The faith to face the hurt. Adam Hamilton in his book, Forgiveness, says, and I quote, healing and, and reconciliation are two inevitable elements that we all need in our lives. Even though it takes willingness and resilience, the rewards are nonetheless huge. Also on the other side of the process is freedom. Freedom for you and for others as well as joy in walking in the path God has laid before us. I'm stronger than this. There's no way that I'm going to let that get to me. It shouldn't hurt like this. I'm okay. I just got caught off guard. It doesn't hurt. I'm just disappointed. These are perhaps the words that many have said after they've been offended, after they've been hurt. We choose oftentimes to avoid appearing weak or soft, but many times we are scarred by the offenses, the hurts, the disappointments of life, the criticisms of life, those acts of disloyalty or betrayal, and Jesus said in Luke chapter 17 that it's impossible that offenses will come, that it's inevitable that in life someone's going to say something to us, somebody's going to do something to us that will offend us. And 
Jesus said, if, if someone offends you or does you wrong, we ought to forgive them. And not only are we to forgive them, he says, if they sin against you seven times in a day, then seven times in a day, repent that thou shalt forgive him. Now, the disciples' response was interesting because they did not say, Lord, well, if that's the case, we got to forgive if someone offends us. In fact, if they offend us seven times in a day and repent seven times, we got to forgive them seven times. The response was not, Lord, give me more love. Or, Lord, give me more hope. Our Lord, I can sure use more, some more patience if I'm going to do that. No, the response was, Lord, increase our faith. That it's going to take faith to be able to forgive like that. And Jesus did not dismiss their request. He just qualified. He said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, that you can say to this sycamore tree, be thou thrown into the sea and it will be. He said the kind of faith that allows you to forgive is mustard seed faith. That is the type of faith that uproots that that is embedded inside like, like a tree whose roots are deep in the soil. So offenses, hurt, anger, bitterness is embedded in our subconscious. And the faith of a mustard seed, the faith that is able to uproot those deep embedded offenses from our minds and from our hearts is the kind of faith we need to forgive. And part of that faith is faith that will face the hurt. Many of us have been disappointed and eventually we need to address that hurt because some of us try to avoid it and avoid the pain of it. Some hurt will be, some of our hurts and disappointments were small, small disappointments like someone forgot to put cheese on your hamburger or someone may have stole your, your mobile phone or, or you know, someone left the door unlocked or someone took your parking space, just little, little things. But then there are some huge things that come in our lives, like being sexually assaulted or a losing a family member to an automobile accident. You know, however, when, whether they are little or large, they carry an emotional impact in our lives. And I believe Jesus included this truth because many times we attempt to exclude ourselves from recon reconciliation of the event. We remember the details, our anger, our resentment, but we really don't spend time, the necessary time, to acknowledge how the action impacted us at the heart level, at the deep level. And we've got to have space to accept the real hurt of this event and this, or the series of events that introduced it into our lives. So the first thing we need to do is accept the hurt. We need to accept the hurt. There are numerous reasons why we don't want to accept the level, uh, accept the hurt. As we accept the hurt, we must also embrace the truth. And so regardless of the reasons why we were offended, the severity of the pain experience that we have experienced one of the first steps toward forgiveness is to acknowledge the truth, to acknowledge what's going on. There are times when we are, many of us are living with pain, living with problems, and oftentimes this hurt, this, this, this hurt that we're go, going through, uh, we encounter it in many different ways. Some, sometimes we've encountered it through friends, sometimes through family members, sometimes through coworkers, sometimes through enemies, sometimes from God itself, God, God's self, we are offended. Uh, but regardless of where it comes from, we've got to accept the reality and accept the truth that we, we, are, we are hurting, that we are upset about it because many times we deny the hurt, we deny the pain, and we would when we deny the hurt and the pain, it really puts us in a, in a situation where it spills out in other ways. As we prepare our hearts for the hope of a new beginning, you know, we're about, we're approaching a new year. 
And for many of us, we want, you know how we do New Year's resolutions. I want a new me in 2023. I want a new me and a new year, a new you for a new year and all that. Well, <laughs> part of having a new year, a new you and a new year is to acknowledge who you are in this year. And it's letting go of the ego, it's letting go of the machoism, it's letting go of the pride, the arrogancy, the Superman, Superwoman complex, and realizing that you are still human, that you possess feelings that can be injured, and then giving yourself permission. You gotta give yourself permission, you gotta give yourself space to feel the sting of the trauma of whatever level it, that it really exists. And it is in experiencing and accepting our hurt that we truly face the moment. Don't attempt to minimize it or make light of it. Feel the irritation, feel the stench of the disappointment and the bruising of your soul. Acknowledge that in the moment it made an impression on you in a way that left you wounded. Give yourself a chance to process that hurt and the impact that it had on your life. As we accept the hurt, we must also embrace the truth of how much our lives have been impacted by it, the, the effect, the influence more of our lives. It affects us more than we really think. And Dr. Sidney Simon in his book, Forgiveness, speaks on how unforgiveness has been proven to have an effect on our lives at several different levels that can cause a series of pain. All right. Now, the second thing we need to do is learn how to how to cope with and live with what's called hurt echoes. In Hebrews 12, 14 through 15, and we looked at this last uh, two weeks ago, that we ought to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root there it is, a bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. A lot of times we have what's called hurt replay. And that we replay the incident in our minds. We live and we breathe out echoes of a psychological collateral damage, and as a it, it threatens us because it means that even though the event is over, the implications of the event continue, sometimes for years, and that there's no real expiration date for the hurt and the suffering of that offense. And so we keep drilling in the past and we feel more comfortable making a home of that suffering it's deep down in our subconscious where the films are being projected every night. You go to bed or you deal with it during the night and you see these movies, we play it in our minds over and over again. The emotional recounting, the psychological experience is as real as when it happened when we revisit memories and small triggers, small things can send us back to that moment instantaneously making us see all that happened back then as though it's still fresh, it still hurts, even after the offense has come and, and has gone, and after a while, we can't shift. We go through what psychologists call manufactured emotions. There are natural emotions. That is a natural reaction to, a, to a, an offense, to a violation. It's a natural emotion, a natural reaction. That's, that's natural. But then af, if, we don't, if we don't face the truth, if we don't have to deal with the faith to face the truth of our hurt and deal with it and cope with it and decipher it, then we move from natural emotions, watch this, to manufactured emotions. That is that we replay it in our minds. And, and if we don't deal with it, it can seep up in paranoia, anxiety, stress, Increased high blood pressure or high blood pressure. See, we are hardwired to have natural emotions in response to a threat or a loss or something that happened to us that was unpleasant or disgusting. It's natural. The danger of, a, of, of dangerous situations, those, that's a state of emotions that are, that are generated 
by something, but, but then there's also manufactured emotions. Watch that. It's hurt that, and it's subsequent, subsequently manufactured that has been birthed into our mind, modified, acquainted with a number of other incidents. And so, for example, can you recall how many people you may have accused as guilty or trying to hurt you, but come to find out their actions were clearly innocent? The worst part is the extent that it's inflicted on yourself with depression while persistently recounting the hurts of the past, and you're trying to move beyond it, but you really haven't dealt with it. And it shows up in, in different areas. It shows up in relationships. It shows up in jobs. It shows up in co our commitments. It shows up in ministry. It shows up with family. These hurt echoes. It's the, the reverberations of past offenses in our minds, in our psyche. Next, not only facing the truth, living with hurt echoes, but lastly, beware of collateral damage. It would be a little better if the hurt remained localized. But unfortunately, when we don't face the truth and we have hurt echoes, manufactured emotions, replaying it in our minds, not dealing with it, but replaying it and, and having the, the toxicity and the bitterness, it bleeds into other areas of our relationships. Workplaces, customers, ministries, commitment, and a host of other things. Listen to what Dr. Simon says. He says, victimization describes what happened to you. A specific event or series of events may have hurt you, terrified you, or took something that you needed away from you. Once we have been victimized, we never forget it. The sense of helplessness and hopelessness that we felt at that time is filed away in our subconscious mind. And as a result, we are likely to feel like a victim whenever we encounter situations that seem to be forced upon us or require us to do things that we do not want to do, even though these situations may bear little or no resemblance to the events that first elicited those feelings. When we encounter situations that we perceive as being beyond our control, the victim part of us takes over and we pay a visit to the victim stage. You may complain about the situation, but do nothing to change it. N not assert yourself, become wishy-washy, hypersensitive or belligerent, lashing out at everyone and everything but the real source of your anger. It's what oftentimes psychologists call misplaced aggression that you are lashing out at something or someone in the present, but you're really mad at something from the past. So you misplace your aggression, you misplace your anger. He goes on to say, what's more, collecting injustices, holding grudges and walking around with unresolved and unexpressed anger, boiling inside of us, it's toll on our physical health and emotional well-being, it creates stress, elevates blood pressure, and increases stomach acidity, contributing to physical ailments as ulcers, colitis, and arthritis. Our grievances hang around our necks like invisible albatrosses, and we develop back aches, chest pains, anxiety attacks, and migraine headaches, sound familiar, with a racing heart and pumping adrenaline, a spinning head and ringing ears, holding a grudge just seems suicidal and neither does the emotional fallout accompanying it feel any better. While nursing our wounds, we have difficulty maintaining friendships because we are generally intolerant and, and, and unable to look at events from other people's perspectives. We tend to become suspicious and hypersensitive as we feel that we are more likely to be hurt again. As a result and effect, we are always ready to start an argument forgetful, 
and supply uncooperative. Our negativity and bitterness alienate everyone around us and we are left alone. We find ourselves lonely and high up in our tower of righteous indignation, accompanied by pains and fantasies of revenge for our company. This is obviously not where we want it to go, but it is always where holding a grudge takes us. So I have just a few minutes. In the last few minutes, let me, let me give you three things. This is not in your, this is not a, a slide, so let me, you're going to have to write this down. Number one, how do we deal with this pain? How do we deal with it? After you deal with it, after you face the truth, after you acknowledge your hurt echoes, the collateral damage, forget it. Don't be a psychological or emotional pack rat. Holding on, you got to let it go. Just like you put trash on your corner and the sanitation worker picks it up, we need to put our anger and our bitterness on the curb of your mind and let the Holy Spirit take it. Forget it, then forgive it. And after you forgive it, forsake it. Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace. Follow and pursue peace with everyone. So it's every, not just the people you like, but it's everyone. And it takes humility. It takes sincerity. It takes allowing the Holy Spirit to really unearth some things and dealing with it, filling, with, filling it, and pushing past it. Finally, let me give you some questions. Number one, what's under your mask? Identify the emotion surrounding the offense that comes to mind. Have you given yourself permission to hurt? Or do you internalize the pain? What does it mean to acknowledge and accept your emotions? What does the process look like to you? Number three, think about your most hurtful offense. Think about something that is, it could have been when you were a child, your most hurtful offense. What emotions did you feel at that time? Since time has passed, have you also experienced anger or blame at yourself for allowing this to happen because you should have known better? Finally, in what areas of your life, relationship, work, family, ministry, etc., have suffered due to your struggle with not acknowledging or accepting your pain from past offenses. I encourage you to review these questions. I encourage you to think through these questions, to, to, to pray and ask God to increase your faith, that you have the faith to forgive by having the faith to face the hurt. And when you face the hurt, it will cause you to confront those emotional echoes, those manufactured emotions. And it will reduce that collateral damage, that damage that is bleeding out into other relationships, isolating you. These are the steps to freedom. These are the steps to releasing yourself from the trap and the bait of Satan.
Pastor, we can't hear you. Can you hear now? Oh, you can hear me now. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so did you hear absolutely nothing I just said? <laughs> okay, all right, I'll start over. All right, let's start over. Uh, good evening. Let me start with that. <laughs> all right. And um, our leadership summit will be on this Saturday for our leaders, our officers, deacons, trustees, ministers, ministry leaders. It'll be at nine o'clock at the church, all right? And um, please have your ministry plans that are due uh, so they can be incorporated in the calendar. And of course, budget requests that are attached to them if there is a need for a budget request uh, to be added into the budget for 2023. So we're doing planning now for 2023, and that's why we need your ministry plans. Church anniversary is this Sunday, our 79th church anniversary. Dr. Ed O. Williamson will be our preacher for this Sunday. Our assessments are $79. Certainly want to thank those who have already given. And for those, you can use your their cash app. You can use um, text to give or the website, or you can come on Sunday and give. Uh, your $79, of which a portion will go to our year in outreach efforts. What are those efforts? Our Thanksgiving baskets, our angel tree. That is what those will be, a portion of your assessments will be used for. Mass food distribution is Monday with Catholic Charities on the 14th. You can be here about 8.30 as we prepare to, to give uh, about 500 boxes of food away on this Monday. College and Greek Sunday will be the third Sunday where your college paraphernalia, your Greek paraphernalia, or if, you're, if you want to support your children or grandchildren's school or your niece or nephew, whatever that is, we'll wear that on the third Sunday uh, for that. And then uh, Thanksgiving basket giveaway will be on the 21st, Monday the 21st, and then our Thanksgiving service will be on Thanksgiving Day, but it will be virtual. Right. So you will watch it at 10 o'clock on Thanksgiving Day. It will be uh, virtual. Thank you all uh, so much. And let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your power and the strength and that you give a measure of faith to each one of us to face the truth, to forgive, to forsake past hurts and offenses, and to forget in the sense that it does not hold us hostage from what you have for us. Lord, our prayer is that for those of us who are trapped by the bait of, in the trap of offense, for those who have taken the bait, that you will help us through the power of your Holy Spirit to free ourselves, to walk in the freedom that we've been given, God, that you've set us free, Lord, that you are a God of freedom, that you are a God of liberty. Your, your word says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so that is, that is our prayer, oh God, that we will walk in freedom, that we will walk in liberty. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful evening. God bless you. We love you. <laughs>